raised in a very tiny town by Fresno. It's called Sanger, uh, Sanger, California. And I am the son of a cop and who was sergeant of the town, uh, who later became an investigator for Fresno uh, in district attorney's office. So I grew up with that machismo cop, you know, and um, I was very feminine. As a kid, I got teased every day. You know, it's very tough, I, I, it, even to this day, to talk about it. But, um, you know, growing up in a small town, I feel you're under a microscope. And then on top of that, uh, you know, the son of a cop. And then my grandparents on my mom's side owned a store in the middle of town that I would work at. So I was very much on display. You know, I couldn't wait to get out. I, I felt like I couldn't breathe in that town. So when it, it came time to go to college, you know, I knew I had to leave at 18. And going to UC Berkeley, where being gay was like, you know, a cool thing, uh, that was the best thing for me, you know, to, to come out, to, to be who I was, to love who I was. So. I always had an interest in the industry. I can remember being a six year old little boy, you know, watching TV all day, but also we'd go to the grocery store and while my brother and my sister were, putting food in the cart, I was at the magazine rack, looking at who was the new Charlie's Angels, what was coming on, you know, on whatever show, who was the, the heartthrob at the moment. You know, I was really into pop culture. And so, um, uh, you know, after graduation, I was like, what am I gonna do, you know? And I thought, what have I always been interested in? And that was television and movies. And right, so I moved to LA, not knowing anybody and pounded the pavement for two years. And, you know, uh, I knew eventually that door would open. You just, you don't give up. You know what I mean? You don't give up. And so I would interview, I went through six interviews in two years. Um, and uh, finally, um, it's all about connecting with somebody. And I had an interview at Fox and connected with the woman there in national promotions. And uh, she hired me as her coordinator. And so I was working on shows, uh, you know, that first year, like that 70s show, Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, and a couple of years later, we got American Idol and everything just, you know, that, that was the show that I worked on the most and um, everything just sort of skyrocketed after that, so. I would definitely, um, you know, tell him that it, it is gonna get better that I'm gonna find my tribe and I'm not gonna be ashamed of who I am and trying to hide who I am, that I'm gonna embrace it mm -hmm. and that I'm gonna be loved for who I am. That basically, so when I look back on my life, when I look back growing up, I was always, always trying to fit in, always trying to chase you know, can I be friends with those boys? Can I be invited to that party? Can I be popular? You know, I was always trying to chase it. And I realized when I was at Berkeley that I was like, I'm not supposed to fit in. I was supposed to stand out and I stand out. I always wanted to be like everybody else. And I realized like, no, that's not, that's not the beauty of it. The beauty of it is being unique, is being standing out and is being LGBTQ plus, to be honest. You know, that is the beauty.